let's say that I have a big database. This database has a table that contains texts, and these are texts that users have been saying on a platform that I own, let's say. Then I might be interested in finding all the texts where it's clear that the user is grumpy. In this situation, I might want to train a machine learning model, but before I can do that, I will also need to start annotating whether or not a sentence is spoken by a person who was at the time grumpy. So to make that easy for myself, I figured I can make a long list of words that might indicate that you're grumpy. I can use this list to then filter the database and then I can start labeling those examples first. However, at the moment, I have a pretty small set of words and I would really like this to be much larger. But at the same time, I also don't wanna manually go through a thesaurus to make this uh, list much longer. So instead, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you a trick that uses word vectors. The main trick is that we're going to try to find similar tokens to the tokens that I have in my seeds.txt file over here. And there is a recipe inside of Prodigy, terms.teach, that will allow me to actually start building my vocabulary uh, using these vectors. So let's explore this terms.teach recipe. I can call help to get more information. And here you can see that in order to run this recipe, I need to provide a data set as well as a set of vectors. I'll call the data set uh, grumpy terms. I think that's a nice name. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using the medium English model from Spacey uh, with the vectors that are in there in order to uh, build my vocabulary list. One quick note about this. You'll notice that I'm using the medium Spacey model here. I could also use the large one, but here you should not use the small Spacey model because that model does not come with word vectors. Uh, this approach is using the cosine similarity between word vectors in order to say something about how similar two tokens are. Uh, and that does mean that we cannot use the small model. But with that out of the way, we can now attach a seed. And as a seed or a starting point, uh, I can give it this seeds.txt file uh, that I started with. It'll start by doing some pre-calculations because it needs to do some things with nearest neighbors and distances. But after a while, we can see that the server is up and we can explore the web interface. Now, the way that this interface works is we see a word over here and we can choose to accept or reject or to skip uh, this word for our use case. But if you pay attention, you'll also notice that there's a little bit of a score here. Uh, and this number is an indication of how similar this word uh, is to our seeds, at least according to uh, the word embeddings. Um, so uh, terrible sounds grumpy. Uh, I think, oh, this, that's an interesting one. Uh, awful, I think is also grumpy, but in my original file, I had awful spelled correctly. And uh, it seems that Spacey in its vocabulary is also aware of a misspelled uh, variant. Um, so that's useful too. So I'll accept that. Another misspelling. At some point, I am also hitting a word that I don't think necessarily implies that you're grumpy. You can also just say that something is cheap. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. Uh, so I'm going to reject this one. And after a while, you are going to notice that the score goes down. And while that's happening, you might also notice that the words just get a little bit less similar as well. So I think icky, yeah, that can still imply grumpy, but we're kind of reaching the limit in my mind. And at this point, majorly, I don't think that that's necessarily grumpy at all. And it makes a bit of sense because the score here is very low too. So let's extend our words of interest by introducing some other tokens to consider. In particular, I think there might also be some verbs that indicate uh, that someone is just a bit grumpy. Uh, so if someone is saying hate, or maybe if they have the word complain, or maybe dislike, um, if those words appear, then that might also indicate grumpiness. So let's run this again. So we can see that the score is high again because we're starting anew. And yeah, this is a verb. So disliking, bemoaning, yeah, complaining, bother. Yeah, I can see that. Despise, I can see that. A boy, yeah. Ah, yeah, so this is an interesting one. So rejoice, you could argue, 
might just be the opposite of hate um, in a way, right? So it's kind of strange. You might think that we see this example. But then again, if we think about word similarity that might be in these embeddings, uh, you might be able to imagine that the word fast and the word slow, uh, that they are actually quite similar because they both describe the speed of something. Uh, and even though words might have an opposite meaning, it's still possible that in the embedded space, they are very close together. Um, so that's what we're seeing here. And this is also why, perhaps counterintuitively, uh, the score is still quite high. Uh, but we can just simply reject this one. And again, at some point, uh, I think we're hitting words that aren't relevant anymore and the score is getting quite low as well. Um, so this will be good enough for now. I'll just hit save and I'll move on to the next step. So we've been annotating some terms and this data set over here now actually has a pretty okay vocabulary, which means that we can do an extra trick. Um, what we could do now is not provide any seeds ourselves, but instead just tell it to resume. We're just gonna say, take all the terms that we currently have in that data set and just use those as the seeds uh, to generate more terms for us. So we can see now that uh, it is taking all the terms that we have in the data set and it's going to be doing some distance calculations. So this does take a small while, but once it's done, we are back in our labeling interface. And I can agree that worse can imply grumpiness. Uh, this term, maybe not so much. Wrong, yeah, I can see that. Awful. Yeah, and I think annoying is a good one too. Embarrassing is a good one. Humiliating. So after labeling for a while, I seem to be hitting lots of these examples where it doesn't make sense uh, to make an association with grumpiness. Um, so I think in terms of terms, we are kind of done now. Uh, and I will now move on to the final step that I wanted to show you in this video. And the final step is to take all the terms in the grumpy terms data set and to turn them into patterns that Prodigy can reuse. Uh, you can do that using the terms to patterns recipe. Um, what I'm saying here is that we're going to save the patterns into this patterns.jsonl file uh, and that I'm going to be attaching a label called grump. We can uh, inspect this file just very briefly. Um, it's a JSONL file where we uh, just have a label and a pattern, which is just a token. Um, but the cool thing about this file is that other Prodigy recipes can go ahead and use them. The TextCat teach recipe or many of the NER recipes can use it. But as a final demo for this video, I think it will be fun to show you how you can also use it with the match recipe. So here is the match recipe for this task. Uh, I'm calling prodigy match. Uh, the first parameter is the name of the data set that I'll uh, be annotating into. Uh, next, I do have to give it a spacey model just for the tokenizer. Next, I need to give it a data set with sentences that I would like to annotate. And then I can give it a patterns file together with a label. Uh, note that the label should correspond uh, with what we see here in the patterns file. And when we do this, we are actually going to be filtering through the entire data set and only show you examples where one of these patterns is actually matching. And when I'm in Prodigy, uh, here are some of the examples that I see. Um, that's just sorry, stupid is the only correct word. Yeah, that's uh, kind of grumpy. Uh, someone's complaining about bad memes. That also feels grumpy. Ah, so in this case, I can see mistake is being matched, but it's not really about grumpiness, so I can go ahead and reject this. But I do like this approach. Um, what I mainly like is that by using these patterns, uh, I can also understand why um, something might be about grumpiness. Um, and this is a likable way of labeling, especially when you're starting out. So if you find yourself in a similar situation, uh, do give this uh, terms trick a try. The final downside to be aware of, though, is that these terms are just that. They are single tokens, and that also means that if you're trying to match something like Star Wars, which is two tokens, let's say, uh, that won't work with this trick because you will be matching um, for single tokens only. That is a downside of this approach. Having said that, it can still be very useful for many applications.